orange, and blue. But it was Gil and the boys who proved that miracles can come true. And that's the world From queens to our kings, six inches to 60 feet is the heat we bring. Strike him out. Fever has 19 strikeouts. The franchise with that drop and die to the legend of Doc in 85. Bring it, man. To Coons taking us on that canyon ride. It's a rich history of golden arms. Over. And every now and then, you have to thank the baseball guys. That ball is gone! A broad slam! And the Mets win! To the mad divers. Oh, what a to the high flyers. He made the catch! To the giants who launch him into the night among these high risers. Get out of here! We are the believers. The fighters. This is for y'all times. One house to another. The moment. Swung out and missed. Strike three. The Mets have won the World Series. Memories. Our history. Together. New York Mets are amazing, 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 amazing. Welcome to City Field for tonight's game against the Colorado Rockies and the return of decades worth of very special guests for today's Old Timers Day game presented by City. We direct your attention to the field and welcome our Master of Ceremonies, a member of the Mets Hall of Fame Committee and the voice of the Mets on WCBS 880, Howie Rose. Thank you. Thank you very much and welcome to a real celebration. 60 years ago, a four-year void in our town was filled as the New York Mets brought National League Baseball back to New York. From the very beginning, at the Polo Grounds, through 45 seasons at Shea Stadium, and for the last 14 years here at City Field, the Mets have been as much a part of the fabric of this city as Broadway, the corner hot dog stand, and the subway. Simply put, the Mets are New York. Some of baseball's greatest and most famous figures have worn the orange and blue over these six decades, contributing to five National League pennants two world championships, and with the promise of more glory to come. Today, we pay tribute to those who have created the special bond that makes the love affair between the New York Mets and their loyal, adoring fan base unique and everlasting. From Stengel to Showalter, from Ashburn to Alonzo, we salute 60 wonderful years of the New York Mets as we welcome back so many of the people who have taken us on this incredible ride. And so, let's introduce our special guests for this afternoon's festivities. An original Met. This lefty was the only pitcher to post a winning record for the 1962 and 1963 Mets, and that wasn't easy. Ken McKenzie. Escorted by his son, Ken, as well as Maxine and Janelle Agee, representing 1969 world champion Tommy Agee. This power hitter led the 1962 original Mets 
with 94 runs batted in and 34 home runs, a mark that stood until 1975. Welcome back to New York, Frank Thomas. Escorted by Larry and Lindsey Berra, the son and granddaughter of Yogi Berra, the manager of the 1973 National League champion Mets. This was the first winning pitcher in franchise history on April 23rd, 1962. We are delighted to welcome back Jay Hook. Escorted by Bill Jr. and Tyler Robinson, the son and grandson of 1986 world champion Mets hitting coach, Bill Robinson. Our next guest led the 1962 Mets in appearances and saves. Here is Craig Anderson. And Craig is escorted by Irene Hodges, the daughter of Baseball Hall of Famer Gil Hodges and her granddaughter, Emma Savelli. This left-handed reliever pitched in the very first night game at Shea Stadium back on May the 6th of 1964, Steve Dillon. This three-time All-Star and 1972 National League Rookie of the Year tossed a shutout in Game 2 of the 1973 National League Championship Series, Mets Hall of Famer John Matlack. This reliable relief pitcher racked up 65 saves during his five-year tenure in Queens. Say hello again to Skip Lockwood. This slick fielding second baseman, and was he good, was instrumental to the 1973 National League pennant winners, Felix Mion. This Brooklyn native won in double digits twice in his career with the Mets, appearing in 30 or more games four times, Ed Lynch. This catcher and four-time All-Star, nicknamed the Bad Dude, spent 10 seasons with the team we are so happy he could join us today, accompanied by his son, Justin. Welcome back, John Stearns. He set a Mets rookie record by reaching base safely in 29 consecutive games in 1977. Here is Steve Henderson. One of the keys to the 1988 National League East champions won 20 games that year. In 1991, he tied the franchise record with 19 strikeouts in one game, David Cohn.
He began the 1987 season with 10 consecutive wins, a record that still stands today. Welcome back, Terry Leach. An important piece of the Mets' bullpen in 1999 and 2000. He went 8-0 in 99. You know what? Back then, his young son would run around the clubhouse. Now that kid runs around National Football League fields. But here's his dad, Pat Mahomes. This Mets catcher and Johan Santana battery mate was behind the plate for the first no-hitter in Mets history. Welcome back, Josh Tolley. Our next guest had lots of big hits for the Mets, including an RBI single in the 10th inning in game two of the 2000 National League Division Series, we welcome back Jay Payton. This left-hander ranks in the top 10 in franchise history in wins, innings pitched, and strikeouts. And he won a huge game, a shutout in 1999's one game playoff with the Cincinnati Reds, Al Leiter. This Connecticut native slugged seven home runs in his first 131 at bats in 1994, and he was defensive whiz at first base, too. Say hi to Rico Bronia. Our next guest pitched the Mets to the 2006 National League's Eastern Division title when he shut out the Marlins at Shea Stadium four to nothing. Here is Steve Trexel. A fan favorite from Hawaii, forever remembered for his walk-off home run in the 13th inning. In game three of the 2000 National League Division Series, Benny Agbayani. The Mets don't win without this durable reliever. He appeared in over 65 games in both 1999 and 2000. As tough as they came, here is Dennis Cook. Buck Showalter might want to hold his ears here, but our next guest walloped a series-ending walk-off home run in game four of the 1999 National League Division Series at Shea Stadium, Todd Pratt. This two-time All-Star ranks in the top 10 in home runs as his fans, Todd's squad, remember them? Cheer them on. Welcome back, Todd Hundley. Another durable and reliable starting pitcher. He made 30 starts for the 2000 National League champions and was tied for third on the team with 11 wins. Say hi to Glendon Rush. This fun workhorse's three postseason wins are tied for the second most in team history. He had a rubber arm. Right-hander Turk Wendell. This Mets Hall of Famer ranks first 
in postseason history in hits, runs, and runs batted in, including a memorable grand slam in the 1999 Division Series, Edgardo Alfonso. He batted 368 with eight runs batted in in the 2000 National League Championship Series. And then he went on to hit 400 against the Yankees in the World Series, Todd Zeal. The most valuable player of the 2000 National League Championship Series, this left-hander pitched 16 scoreless innings against the Cardinals, winning two games. Here is Mike Hampton. A terrific utility player who will forever be remembered for his spectacular catch in Game 7 of the 2006 National League Championship Series, Andy Chavez. He slugged a career-high 34 home runs in 2005, and he caught the final out of the 2006 National League Division clincher, a Mets fan's favorite, Cliff Floyd. Well, our next guest hit 77 home runs during his three years in Queens. Ironically, fans fondly remember a home run that wasn't. His grand slam single to win game five of the 1999 National League Championship Series. We welcome back Robin Ventura. One of the best relief pitchers in Mets history. His 40 saves in 2006 helped lead the Mets to their first division title in 18 years. Lefty Billy Wagner. This guest will forever be remembered for his first major league home run in San Diego. Do you need more? Remember though, he could pitch too. This All-Star won 44 games over four years in Queens. Who knows, he might not be done yet. Bartolo Colon. Another Mets Hall of Famer. This team captain holds the club record with 276 saves, Brooklyn native, John Franco. This four-time All-Star was the greatest base stealer and remains the only batting champion in team history, Jose Reyes. This Baseball Hall of Famer and two-time Mets All-Star collected his 3,000th strikeout with the Mets, Pedro Martinez. And this National League Championship Series most valuable player set a major league record with a home run in six consecutive postseason games, helping lead the Mets to the 2015 National League pennant. Welcome back to City Field, Daniel Murphy.
There is a game coming up, so let's meet the managers. Managing the amazing for today's Old Timers game, this nine-time All-Star played three seasons for the Mets and managed the team from 1977 to 1981. Baseball Hall of Famer, Joe Torre. He managed the Mets from 2005 to 2008. He played for the team as well, but he led the team to a National League East title in 2006. Great to have him back at City Field, Willie Randolph. The other team will be named the Miracles and managing the Miracles. He became the first Met skipper to guide the team into the postseason in consecutive years. We always love to see him, Bobby Valentine. <laughs> By the way, that was a lock. This occasional broadcast partner of mine managed more games than anyone in team history. He led the club to the 2015 National League pennant, Terry Collins. And now, representing the 1969 World Champion Mets. His diving catch in game four, and there's more, his 400 World Series batting average helped lead the Mets to their first World Championship, Ron Swoboda. One of the best pure left-handed hitters the Mets have ever had. He batted a robust 538, helping lead the Mets to a National League Championship Series sweep over the Atlanta Braves, Art Shamsky. From James Monroe High School in the Bronx, he went on to appear in more games than anyone in team history, ranking in the top 10 in hits, doubles, and runs scored, a member of the Mets Hall of Fame, Eddie Cranepool. And Ed is escorted by the daughter of Baseball Hall of Famer, forever, our number 41, the franchise, Tom Seaver, please welcome Sarah Seaver Zeski. In one of the greatest pieces of baseball choreography, he caught the final out of the 1969 World Series and closed it in poetic fashion. This Mets Hall of Famer hit 340 that season. We welcome back Cleon Jones. And Cleon is escorted by more Mets royalty. He is being escorted by Kim Harrelson and her daughter, Alexandra Abatello, representing 1969 and 1986 world champion, Buddy Harrelson. And now from the 1986 world champion Mets, he established a National League Championship Series record 
for most putouts and assists by a shortstop for a six-game series. Rafi is back. Rafael Santana. Adorable reliever. He compiled 33 saves for the Mets between 1982 and 1987. Doug Sisk. Our next guest set what was a then major league record for shortstops with 88 consecutive errorless games, Kevin Elster. He contributed a key 10th inning single and scored the tying run during the magical Game six rally, Kevin Mitchell. This 1979 All-Star and another all-time Mets favorite began the eighth inning rally in game six of the World Series against the Red Sox and then with a bases loaded walk in the ninth, Brooklyn native, Lee Mazzilli. His pitching carried the Mets to victory. This left-hander led the 86 Mets with 18 wins, including the critical game three of the World Series in Boston, Bobby Ojeda. A gritty spark plug. He hit 333 during the World Series and ranks in the top 10 in stolen bases. Still an all time Mets favorite, Wally Beckman. One of the all time Mets. We know him as Mr. 3030. He had three seasons of 30 home runs and 30 stolen bases, the most in Mets history. Welcome back, Howard Johnson. He loved to have fun and he was a great reliever. He led the 1986 Mets in saves in addition to winning 14 games, a whole lot more to him than simply the second spitter. But we welcome back Roger McDowell. This two-time All-Star ranks fifth in team history with 98 wins. A terrific starting pitcher, but he'll always be remembered for his heroic relief effort in Game 7 of the World Series from Hawaii, Sid Fernandez. He could hit and he could dance. How else do they name a shuffle after you? Yep, the Tuffle Shuffle. He hit 333 during the 1986 postseason. Tim Tuffel. Quite possibly the most electrifying player in franchise history. He's a Mets Hall of Famer. And yes, he hit a little roller up along first. The most famous at bat in team history. There's so, so much more to him. We always love to have him here at City Field. Mookie Wilson. This Mets Hall of Famer and beloved broadcaster ranks in the top 10 in club history in complete games, innings, 
strikeouts and shutouts, Ron Darling. The most valuable player of the 1986 World Series. He had a terrific regular season, but will always be remembered for hitting the go-ahead home run in Game 7 of the World Series, Ray Knight. This seven-time All-Star has hit more home runs than anyone wearing the orange and blue. He's a Mets Hall of Famer, Daryl Strawberry. At his peak, he was virtually unhittable against left-handed batters, and he was on the mound for the clincher of the National League Championship Series and the World Series, glove throwing number 47 himself, Jesse Orozco. Our next guest made every one of his starts at Shea Stadium an event. A Cy Young Award winner and Mets Hall of Famer, he electrified fans with his blazing fastball for 11 seasons. Welcome back, the Dr. Dwight Gooden. A five-time All-Star, quite simply, the best defensive first baseman of all time with 11 gold gloves. The Mets' first team captain, this Mets Hall of Famer, had his number 17 retired earlier this year, Heath Hernandez. And finally, the greatest home run hitting catcher of all time, a baseball Hall of Famer and one of four Mets players to have his number retired, Mike Piazza. Let's hear it again for your 2022 Mets All-Timers. Now fans, before our game begins, we ask you to please direct your attention to City Vision for a very, very special video. When a ball player is one of the best to ever play the game, he's an all-time great. When an all-time great changes the way we play the game, he's transcendent. And when a transcendent ball player calls New York home, he's tied to that city forever. He inspires generations to follow in his footsteps. Many greats have represented this city over the years, but only one has had an identity so unique he was known as the Say Hey Kid. Willie Mays perfected the craft of baseball. Everyone wanted to be Willie Mays, especially the kids he played stickball in the streets with. When the Giants moved in 58, hearts were broken. But that wasn't the end of Willie Mays' New York story. In 1962, a new tradition was born in New York. And nearly 10 years later, the city was reunited with the Say Hey Kid. Mays worked that magic in his Mets debut, slugging a game-winning homer. 
Thank you, Willie Mays, for helping write the story of our game. For helping write the story of our city. For helping write the story of our Mets. Fans, 50 years ago, the original owner of the Mets, Mrs. Joan Payson, fulfilled a promise that she made to herself by bringing the great Willie Mays back to New York from the Giants so that he could conclude his career with the Mets. Now, although Willie was a Met for just two years, he helped them win the 1973 National League pennant. In fact, he had a key hit in the pennant-clinching fifth game of the league championship series against the Cincinnati Reds, and the final hit of his career broke a tie in the 12th inning of game two of the World Series in Oakland, helping the Mets win the game and even the series. Willie Mays, like the Mets, began his Major League Baseball journey in New York at the famous Polo Grounds in Upper Manhattan. The connection to National League Baseball in this town runs deep. It runs through Willie and courses through the veins of Mets fans. Upon bringing Willie back to New York, Mrs. Payson promised him that shortly after his career ended, the Mets would retire his number 24. Well, sadly, Mrs. Payson died before she could make good on her promise. And all these years later, it has remained unfulfilled until today. The New York Mets are proud to announce that in accordance with Mrs. Payson's wishes and at the urging of his former Mets teammates, in recognition of his contributions to the Mets, as well as baseball in New York and the country at large, Willie Mays, 24, will take its place in the left field corner here at City Field with the other greats in Mets history. From this day forth, no Met will ever wear Willie Mays iconic number 24. In his honor, please welcome his son Michael, representing the Mays family and joining Willie's teammates on the field for this very special moment. Now, while Willie could not be here today, he is home watching this all unfold. And he sent along a thank you message that I will read for you now. And Willie, thank you for the honor of allowing me to convey your thoughts. Hey, it's Willie here. I've been asked to say a few words, which usually isn't very hard for me. This time, though, I got stuck. How can I only say a few words about something so important to me? I sat down and thought about how it was playing for the Mets back in the 70s. You might lose a lot of details after so many years, but what I can never forget is the way it felt to be back in New York City playing for the Mets fans. Mets fans are loyal. Mets fans are passionate. Mets fans are loud. They let you know 
right now how they feel. Well, let me share how I feel today. The Mets retiring my number, number 24. Man, that's the best. And how do I feel? Like I've hit a game-winning homer. As I prepared what I wanted to say to you, I thought about all of the folks at Shea Stadium who helped me. And then I thought about all of the new friends that I've made at City Field. And since I've got to keep this short, let me mention an important few. I want to thank Mrs. Joan Payson. I want to thank my Mets teammates. I want to thank Stephen Cohen. Most of all, I want to thank all of you Mets fans. Mets fans always gave me the biggest ovations and the loudest thank yous ever. Today, I return those thank yous from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Mets. Well, thank you very much. This has already become one of the most memorable days in the history of the New York Mets. We continue to celebrate 60 years of New York Mets baseball with an old-timers game. It's coming up in just a couple of moments. Thank you. Fans, please rise and remove your caps as we observe a moment of silence prior to the playing of our national anthem. Please direct your attention to City Vision for an in memoriam tribute. A staple at Shea Stadium, Jane Jarvis warmed the stands with her organ tunes. Please remain standing for her rendition of our national anthem.
please direct your attention to the pitcher's mound for an honorary first pitch. On behalf of No Kid Hungry, please welcome Rachel Sabella. Our ceremonial catcher is Todd Zeal. Rachel, it's your pitch. Joining our manager's umpires on the field for today's lineup card delivery, delivery are Lucy Gilherme and Steve Gilliard. Courtesy of City, please welcome Jeffrey Lang to deliver the game ball to the mound for today's Old Timers Day game.
and here they are, your New York Mets. Fans, please welcome Alex Mosey to get today's Old Timers game started. Alex, take it away. Play ball. <laughs> From playing computer games last <laughs> night or whatever you were doing. Um, one other thing. Are we in line to get killed here with yes. an errant throw? It could be. Hopefully, well, Anybody when got a glove? When uh, I'm left-handed. I need a glove. We have to be worried about Reyes, I think, because he could still chuck it. Oh, this is dangerous. I'm not sure Elster's got the arm to hurt us, but Reyes certainly does, so we'll be, uh, we might be in the line of fire a little bit. We're, we're pretty close oh. to being behind first base. All right, now Maz is swinging a bat. See, all these guys are saying, I don't want to play. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to tweak this. I don't want to do that. They're all swinging the bat. They're all loosening up their arms. I we, think the uniform We have to is say hello to the folks watching us now on the video board. You oh. know, we're, we're on the video board, Howie. Well, then we have to say hello over there. <laughs> That's where the camera is. Oh, right, right. That's and he the did camera. TV last night. <laughs> That's why he was on computer instead of real TV. <laughs> well, so anyway, this is... Uh, this, can I say something quickly just from a very Please, personal standpoint? Please, you're the one with the microphone. You want to know what an out-of-body experience feels like? I was 15 years old in 1969. You know how much that team means to me. And so... Jane Jarvis would play the Star Spangled Banner on the organ before every game. And I'd be sitting up in the stands, standing at attention, just as I was 10 minutes ago when her organ music was playing. And I'm looking to my left, and there's Ron Swoboda in uniform, and there's Cleon Jones in uniform. That is an out of body experience. <laughs> well, Howie, we've got a game to play here. John Franco's on the mound. I see Piazza behind the plate, and Jose Reyes is stepping in to start things off. So, Franco is taking pictures, I think, from the mound right now. <laughs> He's going to be an opener. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, throw a pitch, Johnny. There it comes. Oh, that looked good. Ball one to Jose Reyes. He's trying to draw a walk so he could steal. Reyes, a switch hitter, remember. He's batting right-handed against Franco. And he just punched one into the air toward the left field line. Elster couldn't reach it. Jose's taken off for second. He'll have a double. Good effort by Kevin Elster. It was a gust of wind. <laughs> <laughs> so now John Franco's ERA is in trouble. That's a leadoff double, Johnny. <laughs> Now these guys are, are true to form. Mookie Wilson's going to bat right-handed against the lefty. There's a strike. First pitch strike's always important. A shot to right center. It's in, a base hit. Jose Reyes is going to score. Mookie Wilson's got an RBI double. Well, if Murph hits one on the ground to the infield, Mookie's going to score from second. <laughs> At the plate, Daniel Murphy. <laughs> I think the infield shifted here, Howie. I see Tuffles in right field. He's backed up. There's a drive by Murphy. And it's flagged down. Jay Payton makes the catch. Well, John Franco has got through the three batter rule, Howie, and it looks like he's being pulled from this game. On his way to the mound, it's Dr. K, Dwight Gooden. 
It used to be the other way around. Doc <laughs> would hand the ball to Johnny. Uh, Doc just poured over a strike, warming up a little bit. Was there ever a better sight at Shea Stadium than Dwight Gooden on a pitching mound with 50,000 people cheering every pitch? I can't believe my eyes right now. I'm watching Doc Gooden on a pitching mound right now in front of a huge crowd here at City Field. Hojo's the batter, Howard Johnson. I think Doc started him with a curveball. Cliff Floyd better back up in right field. <laughs> <laughs> Hojo, can, he's got power. Doc, you know, Hojo's going to make him throw a strike, looks like. 3-0 and is the count. I think he's got the green light, Howie. He better. There's a strike. Pop up. Elster and Alfonso. It drops. Hojo's headed to first. They, they might have had a play there, but Hojo's safe. <laughs> you know, Mookie Wilson on second, Howard Johnson on first. This is double steal territory, if you ask me. Well, here comes Lee Mazzilli. Saw Mazzilli stretching before the game today. I went to help him up. He looked like he needed a, uh, some assistance. Ah, hey! <laughs> that was Wayne. <laughs> There's a strike from Doc. One ball, one strike on Mazzilli. Good eye. <laughs> Zilli took a big swing. He was trying to hit it into the Coca-Cola corner. <laughs> Unfold him. <laughs> I, got the, I like the behind the plate view there. You know, he wouldn't fish. Didn't go after that breaking ball in the dirt. Three and two on Mazzilli. Send the runners. I'm telling you, Mookie and Hojo, this is double steal waiting to happen. Mazzilli works. Look at the bat flip from Lee Mazzilli. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the All-Star game against Gidry. All right, Doc's coming out. Here comes Jesse Orozco. I think Jesse looks like he could still pitch an inning. Oh, this is perfect. Robin Ventura with the bases loaded. <laughs> Mr. Grand Slam. Now, if he hits one here, they got to let him touch all the bases this time. That's up to Pratt. Where's Todd? <laughs> Get ready. Infield fly rule. Elster makes the catch. <laughs> they really did put the infield fly rule on, too. Yeah, well, this rules. is serious business. Rules are rules. Our base is still loaded. Here's Steve Henderson. Hendu. Notice that Jesse Orozco got the lefty out in a big spot. Mazzilli has Zeal playing behind him at first. Mazzilli says, don't pick me off. Mike Piazza with a chance. Oh, just couldn't reach it, a foul ball. That would have been on Sports Center, Mike. Might still be. <laughs> Cal
Out is 0 and 2 on Steve Anderson. Got to dust off home plate. Jesse gets this out. Watch out for a flying glove. <laughs> Good save by Piazza. Got a man on third here. You know, Mookie's looking to score. Bouncing ball to third. Alfonso's got the force out. And a good job by Johnny Franco, Doc Gooden, and Jesse Orozco. Only one run for the Miracles in the top of the first. We can report for Well, hello against the bottom of the first. Howie, we're back on camera. Welcome to Bartolo Colon's audition tape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see how he does it. Gardo Alfonso is going to lead off against Big Bart. And Colon, we've seen, we've seen his Instagram videos. He's still got it. Whoa. Strike one. This is serious stuff right here. Good luck, Ed Gardo. <laughs> There's a drive. Andy Chavez with the catch. And he didn't even have to climb the wall. <laughs> and Gardo gave that a pretty good ride. We have a radar gun on Bartolo. That looked pretty major leagueish. <laughs> Tim Tuffle, the batter. Uh, <laughs> you know Bart's going to pour him in there at least. <laughs> Tim Tuffle, base hit. Clean single. The line drives straight through the middle. Now the batter, Cliff Floyd. There's a rocket base hit for Floyd. Tim Tuffle goes to second. Back to back hits. And that ball was smoked. Well, Al Leiter is coming in to relieve Bartolo Colon. Ladies and gentlemen, Al Leiter. And relative to Bartolo Colon, understand that the rosters expand by two on September 1st. <laughs> throwing strikes, throwing hard, hey. 
Somebody could take a flyer on that. Well, we've got a big moment ahead here, Howie, because due up to face Al Leiter is Mike Piazza. One of the great batteries in Mets history. <laughs> Leiter threw one to the backstop. high there a lighter getting squeezed a bit looked like two balls no strikes on Mike there's ball three I think I think by rule Piazza has to stand there forever until he swings the bat he's got the take sign now go back now no ball four no ball four let him hit All right, ball five. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Got to keep. He's got to stay in. Al still needs to get to his pitch count. All right, five balls, no strikes on Piazza. <laughs> Tuffle and Floyd just stole bases. Nobody noticed. <laughs> This one's coming to us, Howie. We are going to die. <laughs> Foul ball. We survived. There's a drive by Piazza. Andy Chavez has it. Another one that was hit well. Piazza gave it a good smack toward left center field, but Andy Chavez able to catch it. Tuffle did score. So it's a sacrifice fly, and it's one to one. Now Todd Zeal's got a chance for a two out RBI here. Floyd's at second. And Josh Tolley with a good block back there. Todd Zeal fouls one off. Two balls and a strike. There's a strike from Al Leiter starting to find his groove. Fly ball. And the catch is made by Steve Anderson. After one inning, the score is one to one.
All right, top of the second inning about to begin. We've had a pretty entertaining start to this one, Howie. Well, it promises to be even more entertaining now that the sun's starting to set a little bit. Guys might have trouble seeing the ball. Who knows what could happen? <laughs> I see Rico Bronia has checked into first base. Rafael Santana over here at short. When you're sitting behind first base, Rico Bronia is as good an insurance policy as you could have. I agree. Andy Chavez, the batter. <laughs> this show's bunt. Better watch it over there at third base. Edgardo Alfonso. Andy bunt and beat it out. Uh oh. Jesse Orozco. Saw Andy Chavez show bun on the first pitch, threw one up and in on the second pitch. That's just good pitching. Line drive, base hit, Andy Chavez. That's up the gap. Andy's going to get two. Well, Daniel Murphy is with us right behind first base. And judging by the reaction of the crowd, Murph, you are forever a New York Met. Well, humbling to be back. I was glad to be asking these fans. It was such a great reception for all of us as we got off the bus today. It was unreal, and to walk them off last night, um, yeah, exciting time here in Queens. You're not that far removed from playing. Do you, do you feel like an old-timer, even? Tolly's younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're all over me for. Move him over, Tolly. That's what? That's going to be a base hit. Josh Tolly gets a hit. Oh, I think I got to go hit. Well, that's oh, yeah, what Murph's you're here up. for. Yeah. All right. This is not the on deck circle, but we're glad you came <laughs> over to say hi. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me. Nice Thanks, talking Murphy. to you again. Daniel Murphy, everybody. <laughs> He's Daniel Murphy, and he bats third. Don't forget that. Jose Reyes. Two on, nobody out. What do you think of Roscoe's got in the tank? 80, 90 pitches? Oh, he's got a rubber arm. He always did. <laughs> Jose Reyes with a line drive right to Benny Agbayani and left. Benny didn't have to move for that one. Right to him. Nice catch, Benny. And this is great. Steve Dillon will relieve Jesse Orozco. Another left-hander, Steve Dillon, whose son works in security here at City Field, also pitched in the very first night game in the history of Shea Stadium back in early May of 1964. And here he is, 58 years later, <laughs> back on a mound, wearing the uniform of the New York Mets and firing darts. <laughs> How great is this? Classic old windup, too. Steve Dillon taking his final warm-up tosses. And he'll face Mookie Wilson with runners on first and second. Imagine that Casey Stengel used to bring Steve Dillon in from the bullpen to pitch. And Steve Dillon is here all these years later on the mound. That's something. I wonder if Casey ever gave him a one-liner or two while he was taking him out. Mookie Wilson hits one deep to left over Agbayani's head. Andy Chavez is going to score if he can get around Alfonso over there. Josh Tolley goes to third. RBI double for Mookie. Even on what for him is a jog, isn't there still something special about watching Mookie Wilson run? Now it's Daniel Murphy to bat. A 
I see Pedro Martinez warming up over here. I don't know. Maybe Turk Wendell's the one warming up, and Pedro's <laughs> just catching him. Short fly ball. Might drop. It does. Base hit for Daniel Murphy. Two runs are going to score. Tolley and Mookie Wilson come home. Two RBIs for Murphy. The Miracle's building a lead, Howie. It's 4-1. to one. Murph remains a hitting machine. Never a doubt. And here comes Pedro. Howard Johnson due up to face a Hall of Famer, Pedro Martinez. You know, we're used to seeing future Hall of Famers pitching. We see Scherzer and DeGrom all the time, and now we're seeing an actual real-life Hall of Famer. Guy's already in on the mound. Pedro Martinez. Hojo fouls off the first pitch. Yeah, but he still has that beautiful swing. Pedro hits the outside corner with a strike. Pedro with a pitch there. Piazza, like he was calling for a pitch out or something. Who's catching now? Who is it? <laughs> oh, Zeal's catching. Howard Johnson struck out, so now the batter will be Robin Ventura. Batting out of order. What happened to Mazzilli? He's still trying to get unfolded. <laughs> Cut Ry Robin. I'm, I'm sure these two had some battles over the years, plenty of times. <laughs> two balls, one strike on Robin Ventura. Watch out for that changeup from Pedro. Now that's his signature pitch. That would be ball four if if we're doing that. Round ball to first, Rico Bronia sliding, throws it by Pedro. <laughs> Murphy goes to third. Great effort by Rico into a slide to try to make that play happen. Sometimes the instincts just seem to kick in and <laughs> you see the ball there and Rico slides around it, tries to make the play to first. The batter here is Roger McDowell. Pitcher still hit in the old timers league. <laughs> Might squirt through. It does. Base hit Roger McDowell. It drives in a run. Daniel Murphy scores, and it is a 5-1 to one lead for the Miracles. Andy Chavez steps in. Hit the ball hard his first time. Got under this one. And a catch made in left center field by Jay Payton to end the inning.
16. You know, Howie, I feel like there was a missed opportunity with McDowell going to the outfield to have a Roscoe pitch and then for them to switch like the old days and then have McDowell pitch and a Roscoe play the outfield. One very special night in Cincinnati and Turk Wendell is back. <laughs> Rosenbag just got the worst of it. <laughs> Batter is Todd Pratt. And Turk, they still got a good breaking ball, it looks like. Turk could pitch tomorrow. <laughs> he could pitch then on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He could pitch every day. Pratt gets a hold of one. And Andy Chavez is there to make the play. Buck is probably <laughs> thinking, sure, now it stays in the park. If Buck had Indy, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe things are different. <laughs> The Turks coming out, new pitcher, Billy Wagner. A great closer and a legitimate Hall of Fame candidate. Yeah, he certainly is. He's been moving up that ballot more and more over the last few years. Billy's still got a good heater, it looks like, too. Lee Mazzilli is going to help John Stearns coach first base. It is great to have the dude back in New York. I like that Hojo's wearing some sort of track man tracker too to make sure the analytics staff gets what they need info wise from Howard Johnson. That's smart. John Stearns was a great defensive back at the University of Colorado. He was once asked, where do you think you would have wound up if you'd played football professionally? He said, Canton, <laughs> the home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Elster hits one toward right. Murphy couldn't reach it. And it falls for a base hit for Elster. Murphy almost got to it out there in right field. <laughs> One out, don't get picked off. <laughs> <laughs> now the batter, Rafael Santana. Got to watch Wagner. He's a lefty. Got that pickoff move. Yeah, we better watch it. <laughs> Wagner blowing fastballs by guys in the old timers game. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Murphy lets it drop, try to turn two, and they drop the ball. Would have been a double play, but Santana reaches. Ojo couldn't hold the throw from Jose Reyes. It was a knuckleball, it was the camera's fault. New pitcher now, it's Ed Lynch. Is there a rule about going to the rubber? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get up there, Ed. There we go. Here's a postseason hero for the Mets, Benny Agbayani. Fouled the first one back from Ed Lynch. <laughs> Where's Turk going back to the bullpen to warm up some more? He said, I've got to go do some sprints. <laughs> There's a drive to left by Agbayani. Mookie catch up to it. Yes, he can. What a catch by Mookie. Agbayani drilled that one, and Mookie Wilson running back toward the warning track, reaching up to make the backhanded catch. What a play.
about a guy who still looks like he could play. Oh, there he is, Eddie. Which sport? <laughs> Pat Mahomes Sr., we have to call him now. You know, his son has eclipsed him in fame. Patrick yeah. Mahomes, pretty good quarterback. Yeah. He's Pat. His son is Patrick. All right, the third inning, we're ready to go. Steve Traxel on the mound. Josh Tolley's batting. It's like Todd Pratt is catching, I believe. We're about to be joined by Billy Wagner. <laughs> well, Billy Wagner is with us in the booth right now. And Billy came a lot closer to getting hurt putting the headset on <laughs> than he did throwing a pitch. Were you throwing 95? No, I was praying that it wouldn't hit back at me and that I didn't have to do anything but throw, just throw strikes. Josh Tolley just got a base hit. It's really easy to get base hits right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't count against your ERA, so let everybody have fun. Yeah, but it goes down on your war, <laughs> yeah. whatever that means. Well, this is one of the first times I think you've been back at City Field representing the Mets since you left them as an active player. Does it kind of put that Mets blood back through your veins? Well, I tell you, I had the greatest experience as a Met coming up, and uh, you know, I, I don't think everybody thought I would handle being in New York as well, being from uh, a small town. But I tell you, uh, the the city just embraced me. It was great atmosphere, great teammates. It just made it easy, and I mean, I rode in and out of the park with a Hall of Famer, so I mean, it, it wasn't that difficult. How much are you paying attention to your rise up the Hall of Fame ballot rankings and how close you're getting now? Just enough, just enough to know that I've got to keep practicing that Hall of Fame speech just in case. <laughs> but uh, you know, you can't help it. I mean, it's it's uh, you know, it's something every kid dreams of. Uh, so, you know, speaking of the Hall of Famer. Now Mike Piazza is at the plate facing Dennis Cook. It's <laughs> awesome. Well, Mike couldn't catch up to that pitch from Dennis Cook. Mike might have hit the furthest home run off of me in the Astrodome. <laughs> it was we were talking about that, and then I got in a bat the next day, right after that. Because they left me in because he tied the game up. And I faced Cookie. And I took these big old hacks and struck out, and Mike was laughing at me the whole time. <laughs> that was one of the more memorable series the Mets had back in 1998. Yes. In September. And the one guy who took the ball every day in that series when his arm looked like it was about to fall off was Turk Wendell. What's new, right? I mean, ever since I met Turk, we, when... His agent was my agent at the time, and so I was introduced to Turk when he was in Chicago and had, you know, the deer antlers and the, everything <laughs> else hanging around his neck. And so that was so much fun to, uh, to watch him and how he flew. Mike Piazza gets a base hit. You and Piazza had some battles both ways over the years, too. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, you know, when you face the best of the best, you know, that's, there's no... There's nothing wrong with getting beat by that guy. And, and I like challenging him. We had some good battles in L.A. And then when he came to New York, I mean, it was just fun. You know, the Marlins, I mean, it was just a, he's a great player. And, uh, you know, it was, it's been a fun experience facing him. And, I mean, he's intimidating. He stands up there. The ball, there's only a few guys where the ball comes off their bat. And it sounds different. He was one of them. And when he hit that home run off of me, it sounded, it sounded like he'd hit that with just ivory. That thing was a rocket. It was we, impressive. We hear that same sound when Pete Alonzo gets into one. <laughs> Todd Zeal batting with the bases loaded. That ball. Turk almost got to that one in foul territory. What do you think of Turk playing third base here, Billy? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting right here. I, I mean, I don't know if it's a good defensive strategy we're going with right here. <laughs> Even players second guess managers. <laughs> There's a ground ball base hit for Zeal. These guys are taking it way too serious. Jose Reyes is going to score on that. Two RBIs for Todd Zeal. Is there a mercy rule in this? We're getting there. Glendon Rush coming on to pitch for the Mets now. Aptly named because he could get through an entire nine-inning game in about two hours. <laughs> 
to see Glendon swing the bat, too. You know, he could hit a little bit. That's right. And they will tell you, the only person here that hasn't gotten at bat is really Mike Hampton. I think everybody wants to see Mike Hampton swing. Oh, that's true, too. Robin Ventura with a fly ball. It drops in. It's like Terry Leach heading to the mound, Howie. A side armor. Won 10 straight games in the 1987 season for the Mets when they really needed help because so many pitchers had been injured. And Terry Leach stepped in and really filled the void. He's going to face McDowell. So McDonald's going to bat right-handed here against the, the sidearm. I really feel like Rogers having more fun than most of the pitchers. They, they really are. I mean, he's, he's getting the hit, he's running bases, and he doesn't have to go He's doing mound. right. He's doing everything but pitching. There's another half inning. We can change that, right? What we should really do is work on the hot foot with him. That's where we should really work with. I'm not so sure that, so sure that hasn't been done today. We have to, uh -huh. we have to take attendance and yes. see if everybody's still there. Anybody got a melted cleat anywhere? <laughs> oh, yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Burnt socks. <laughs> yeah, it was so. Yeah, I grew up watching him, and then he got to be my pitching coach my last year, and what a treat that was, man! I, people don't realize how awesome he is. Now, Terry Leach still throwing sidearm. That's why Rogers batting left-handed. <laughs> He's taking this about very serious, you can tell. A lot of guys taking a lot of pitches here tonight, more than I thought we would see. Well, he's going with two hits, too. <laughs> a couple RBIs. And a bat flip. And <laughs> today's trend. Well, Lee Mazzilli had the best bat flip of the day after he walked earlier. You were the bat flip king. There you go, Mazzo. Nice to see you standing up straight again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, they're walking. It. I don't think we're going to get three outs in this inning. It's eight it. to one. Billy, thanks a lot. <laughs> hey, thank you guys. Great seeing you again. Always, always. Always, always great catching up. Well, this has been as hoped and as advertised the Mets' first Old Timers Day since 1994. We appreciate you embracing it, we appreciate the players embracing it. We appreciate ownership for creating it. It is one for the memory books. Thank you so much for being with us.